other shows come and go, New Contemporaries has been around in one form or another for around 60 years. It used to be called Young Contemporaries, but obviously it's not cool to call things young or old anymore, so new is the word, and it stayed. It exists in many different ways. It used to be run by art students themselves. Then it sort of, in a way, stopped altogether. And it was reconfigured in 89, when I was one of the selectors. And that was the first time it was thought that a sort of group of professionals within, within the art world would be able to select. One of the really important things about New Contemporaries is how it's judged, uh, which is to say it's judged by three practicing artists, by artists who are committed to helping uh, fellow artists, to helping fellow artists who are at an earlier stage in their careers, and who actually bring their own eye and their own professionalism to bear. It's quite a tough process. They look at you know, thousands of pieces at work. I think they're uh, cloistered away for a number of days, looking at image after image after image. But they put in that dedication, they put in that time because they believe in the process and because they believe in the fruits of the outcome from that process. It's a blind submission. Um, you don't know uh, who the person is, uh, what their kind of uh, educational kind of background is. Yeah, obviously there's not a huge amount of time given to each work, so there's kind of a, there's quite an intuitive level on what people have to sort of react to. However good and however closely the, the selectors sort of follow the work, there's always an ultimately an element of chance. The judges this year, new contemporaries, Gabriel Curry, Dawn Meller, and Mark Lecky. Uh, current practicing artists, each of whom have got, uh, I think, really uh, important practices. Mark Necky obviously won the Turner Prize a couple of years ago. And it's uh, and each year what you see with New Contemporaries is a particular calibre of artist and judge and who are committed really to exploring what new work looks like right now. Everyone can submit up to 10 slides or snippets of video, and every single thing is looked at. It's all done completely anonymously, so when you're looking at things, you don't know whether it's a man, woman, how old they are, where they went to school. That aspect of it's really important to us. This is my first time going through it, and I have to say I was really amazed because the selectors, and it's people who are really at the height of their career, the selectors, they really, really take the time to, to look at every single thing. I was a student in London. I did my master's in the mid-90s in Goldsmiths and I know New Contemporaries, it's a big deal. It means a lot to artists at a certain stage and I somehow wanted to uh, be part of it and also get involved and pay back some of the many things I learned in London when I, when, when I lived here throughout the mid-90s. When you're leaving college, it gives you a kind of exposure that means that a lot of people see a particular piece of work or see the way in which you work. And so from that uh, show, there were um, a number of people that approached me about exhibiting either that work or about uh, future projects. And so I can kind of uh, trace a line of, of, of people having seen Birdsong at New Contemporaries who then approached me about other shows. So there's definitely it definitely had an impact in that sense. For me, the crucial thing about New Contemporaries it is Band of Bitter's name. It's a contemporary show. Contemporary not just in contemporary art practice, but contemporary because it takes the state of current art practice right now, and it looks at the figures who are creating new work and who will become more significant over time in the years to come. In that respect, I think it's a particularly exciting show because in one room, in one set of rooms, we have potentially the best of a generation all on show at once.